Hi everyone, I'm Ben Wright, successful entrepreneur, corporate leader and expert sales coach to some of the most talented people our amazing planet has to offer. You're listening to the Stronger Sales Team Podcast, where we bring together and simplify the complex world of B2B sales management to help the millions of sales managers worldwide build, motivate and keep together highly effective sales teams. Teams who grow revenue and make their businesses actual profits. Along the journey, we also provide great insights and actionable steps to managing your personal health. A happy and productive you is not only better for your teams, but everyone around you. So if you're an ambitious sales leader who wants to build the highest performing and engaged teams, Stronger Sales Teams is right where you need to be. Welcome back to Stronger Sales Teams, the place where we provide real world and practical advice to help you develop super powered B2B sales teams. So today is a fantastic day because we have Matt Swally, uh, one of the co-founders at Omneki with us. And, and Omneki, uh, quite a cool name, right? It took me until I saw their logo uh, when I was doing my research to realize that it's an anagram around monkey. Very clever, very much like it. Um, but but Omneki, that, they are an AI marketing platform that generate and optimize personalized ad creatives to increase sales across all of your digital touch points. So they have lots of fantastic tech that powers in behind their business. But for the easy explanation for those of us listening, Omneki will take um, marketing and advertisements and start to personalize them for your audience, right? It's a terrific way to use AI and a terrific way to make sure your brand is resonating with the customers you want to. So Matt himself, he has a fair bit of horsepower in sales. Uh, He's got 13 years of strategic leadership experience from AT&T. And in those roles, he looked at corporate strategy, he looked at business development, sales team growth, all of those metrics that we have known um, and come to love as sales leaders. Uh, He also uh, held leadership positions such as Chief of Staff, cool title. I love it when someone's called Chief of Staff. Uh, And that was for AT&T's global business as well. Um, And he's directed small teams uh, or sales teams, sorry, in smaller businesses um, and mid-market enterprise accounts. So Matt made the big jump over to Omneki a few years ago. He even had to relocate. So he's done the opposite of of what our family's done and and moved away from the beach. Uh, Now, that's a big commitment, right? So, So complete hats off. Uh, and commitment to the entrepreneurship cause. So, Matt, um, welcome and thanks for joining us today. Hey, Ben, thank you so much for having me on the Stronger Sales Team podcast. And like I said, like you said before, sales is such a big part of my life ever since uh, I was young as well. And then through all my last 15, you know, 20 years of, of from the initial days of making cold calls and, and, and meeting with thousands of customers to leading teams and now on to, you know, startups. Yeah, yeah, cool, and uh, and what a what a world for the uh, not so faint hearted it is. Well, tell me, please, and, and everyone listening, tell us a little bit more about Omneki, um, what what you do, and why you love it so much. Yeah, so we are an artificial intelligence powered marketing platform. Um, we use data and analytics for why your customers are clicking or buying or uh, signing up for a lead. We look at the data, and we use a tool called computer vision that can like it can quantify design and what's working based on performance. And then we use these as an input for, uh, to generating more effective creative for all the different digital platforms. And uh, there's a huge challenge out there now for number one, marketing is becoming more and more personalized. There was first, there was broadcast one ad reached millions and there was narrow cast. It got a little more narrow. We're getting increasingly closer to personalization. Um, when you hear it, it's the biggest buzzword again. There's still not really one-to-one personalization, but you can get much more granular on your specific audiences, your verticals, your different locations, your business sells to uh, different languages, different geographies, um, different products and services, and then the, all the different places that your customers may be. You want to meet them where they are and keep moving them through the sales process. I am a huge fan of personalization. It's something I've spoken about a lot. Uh, to see that AI is leading us down this path at scale uh, is pretty amazing, pretty scary, but pretty amazing. And, and that's what we're going to focus on today. We're going to focus on around how sales is changing with the the rise and, and rise and rise, right, of machine learning and AI. So um, so why don't we start there? Um, in your opinion, you, you've got some blue chip experience here around sales. 
How has sales evolved over the last decade or so? Sure. So in my background was primarily direct sales back at at t the early days. So we were meeting with customers face to face. It was a large geography, but not, you know, global scale. Well, we had the global team for a while, but we were focusing on a, a specific smaller territory. And that time it was, we loved the relationship building aspect of sales, but it was a lot of cold calling, uh, meeting face to face more so. Mm-hmm. And the whole evolution of what's happened now is that things are becoming more transactional. Like when you're meeting with customers, you have to be much more prepared upfront. Um, the expectations are people are meeting with maybe five to eight people in a day now versus back in the day, it was like a couple of meetings because mm-hmm. they're taking Zoom calls, they're having maybe a face-to-face meeting. But digital now, it has to be that base to um, driving lead generation in sales. Um, before you would you know, go get business cards, make phone calls, put it into your CRM, and then continually nurturing that through email or other avenues. Today, you can go test your messaging to thousands or millions of people with different types of advertising or even organic content, figure mm-hmm. out what's working based on the messaging, what's bringing customers to your website or buying your product, and then you continually to refine it as you figure out who your ideal customers are. And then the next step of the conversion is figuring out how to continually refine your sales process. Like how do I improve the discovery phase? How do I give a better sales demo? How do I improve the the contracting process? It flips where you can have a, a much smaller sales force that that's actually spending more time with customers than before of a huge outbound, you know, emotion. Yeah, no doubt. No doubt sales is changing from how you contact customers as well. I think you, you mentioned there, uh, it, it used to be quite simple cold call meeting, whereas now there's there's multiple ways we're getting in touch with customers. And from that is also a, a rise of a requirement to actually get in touch with customers. More of the touch points moving from, from five to six were the numbers pre-COVID around closing a sale, now up to 11, 12, 13. So, so whilst there's some great advantage to get messages out there en masse, we actually need to be getting out to customers more because they're doing their research, because they're involving others in the decision. So, so cool. So, uh, so out of that, what do you think are the, the emerging channels that are coming through? And, and do you think that the attention span we have from buyers is remaining the same? Or do these emerging channels need to take into account how that's changing? Well, each each channel has different types of content, really. So a lot of like your your TikToks and Instagram stories, and they require like video content that's more user generated that people can connect to more. Your websites are going to have more banner ad type of ads still where you're like scrolling and you, you click on it yep. and sometimes people like them. So they're like what they call native ads. So they look like they're not an ad. Um, and then the biggest, the biggest challenge to all this is keeping your brand consistency, but then telling your story in different ways that resonate across the different channels. Um, you can still, I mean, you still have emotion. You can meet with a customer, you, you know, after they visit your website, you can retarget them with digital ads across all these different channels. Mm. And where personalization is going now is AI can power every different aspect of the creative process. It's the biggest disruption in in all of AI really is content creation today that is reaching the point that it's good enough to scale through growth. So it can empower, you could give AI a, you know, the different attributes of a customer, um, where they, you know, where they live, what industry they're in and then feed it the product details and be like, write me five different ads that, that resonate with this audience. Then all of a sudden you have these scripts and then you can use those scripts to feed image generation or video generation. And then it's getting to the point, Ben, now where you, with video, there's two different ways we look at it is one is you take all the brand assets and production assets. You can retell the story through, you know, AI that way using the assets. The other is AI avatars. And so they're getting better and better. So it could actually train the AI on you, Ben, you're a podcast host and Mm -hmm. have Mm -hmm. businesses. Um, Mm -hmm. And after the AI learns, you know, what you look like, how you talk, I can give AI Ben a script. And then within 30 seconds, we have production level stuff that can go, go out to market. And one of the fun yeah. examples I, I I like on this is like automobile groups or someone that has like a bunch of automobile dealerships. 
Um, you could have a new promotion that goes out on the first of the month and have a, that person that owns the dealership talk at 15 different locations and then have those go out with the new promotion, who to talk to at the dealership without having to go film it all. Yeah, wow. So, so we're not just talking about AI being an empowerment tool for the channels that you get out to, but we're also talking about it being an efficiency tool. Uh, in, in fact, almost a, a clone-like uh, tool. So let's say you, you cloned you clone me. Heaven help, there were more of me in this world. But uh, let's say you clone me out there. How close is it getting now to being very much like myself? Uh, it is getting 95% there. Now, some of the emotions and enthusiasm is more challenging to mimic today, uh, but it's 95% looks really good if it's film. Like what you sk- what you train the model on is good green screen quality production. It's 95% there. Yeah, wow. Well, well I, I can't wait one day to see that avatar of me out there. I, I don't know if I'll cringe or I'll be uh, pleased about it, but uh, um, no doubt it'll come one day. Well, we were talking about earlier LinkedIn, Ben, before the podcast here for yeah. a second, like how you can, you know, constantly have content on LinkedIn. But imagine you could have, you could train AI on yourself and be producing, you know, sales tips of the day, every day. You just have a mm. long list and mm. you're no longer having to film it. You've got <laughs> your best, your mm. best tips going out every single day. Mm-hmm. And and I think we might we might jump into that in a minute because there's there's certainly going to be this overlap between automation and personalized value where where individuals with our with our own levels of EQ just can't mimic uh, and there is absolutely I think going to be a special place moving forward for those salespeople that can really think about how they drive that personalized value but but before we do that let's talk about how. Um, sales teams um, now and moving forward, particularly over the horizon, let's say horizon one and into horizon two, right? So months and into into the next year or so, how can sales teams prepare effectively to actually capitalize on the AI tools that are in the market now and emerging? Yeah. So this is one of my favorite topics as well. So one thing I highly recommend is start subscribing to the different AI newsletters. So there's a, I have a handful of them I really like. Ben's Bytes is one of my favorites, but they send you new technologies that come out every day. So this evolution of AI has thousands of new applications and efficiency tools being built every day. Now, not every one of them is solving a fantastic business problem, but you can go test these for free. So like this newsletter will give you five to 10 new apps every day. A lot of them have to do with, a lot of them can empower you in your sales process in a different specific area, write a better email, write a, you know, produce content that you can send along with your emails. And I just suggest testing out a couple of these every day. So you learn how to start communicating with AI to get great results because prompt engineering is one of the biggest skills right now, where if you don't know what to tell AI, you're not going to get great results. So the better you get at prompt engineering, the better your outputs are going to be and the more efficient. I mean, there's a lot of talk out there right now that there's going to be billion dollar businesses out there with 20 employees. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Uh, Just based on learning how to utilize all these tools. um, And really the best way is to just start trying out a bunch of them, learn from each one, what you can incorporate into your workflow. And then uh, either you can build some things in house or um, use what you think works great. The, uh, this really capitalizes on my beliefs around training. The higher you can build your base or the bigger you can build your base, the higher the peak will be of that pyramid down the track. So so what I'm hearing from you is that to really capitalize on AI, we need to start getting comfortable with it. So you mentioned Ben's Bytes. Um, I use Superhuman to do something similar. Is it is an, is an email that I get. Hey, hey, I'm switching to Ben's bites, right? With a name like that, uh, how can I not? How can I not go? Um, uh, not, not mine, by the way, for those listening. Uh, so, by getting comfortable with AI and what it does, it takes away some of that fear, right? Um, inaction can cause absolute terror. Um, action will certainly reduce that fear. So, so as leaders, if we can be getting across what's happening with AI, we are we are first of all doing the right thing, and the second thing is that by testing it. We're then raising that knowledge base a level again that allows us to be ready when when that next generation of AI comes out, right? When ChatGPT goes from 
ChatGPT to ChatGP4 and starts charging, right, which is which is obviously happening now, um, we understand exactly what these technologies can do, so we can we can make uh, we can take more advantage of them. So I like that. I certainly hope we don't get to billion dollar companies with twenty staff because I love working with people, uh, and a lot of people I know like working with people too. So um, I think that that would be a shame. But but uh, in fact, as we talk about that. Um, that that certainly sounds like a business where AI is taking over. But I've been following Omniki on social media. I, I love some of your posts that that come out. But one in particular grabbed me, and that's around talking about AI as a co-pilot rather than a human replacement. So, can you talk me through your thoughts around what that means uh, and where to from here? Yeah. So. Employees' jobs will not be limit, eliminated, but if they if people do not skill up, they're going to have to go find something else to do. It empowers creativity. So where we're seeing a lot in the content generation is an ideation, creativity, like places that you couldn't think of new ideas quickly for, like like I said, different audiences or different verticals. You might have only been advertising for one different one of those. Now you can go to five different ones mm-hmm. and come up with concepts and ideas much much quicker. That's where we see empowerment. The second is plugging in AI to all the different areas of your workflow. So like the traditional content, I'm just going to go back to content again, advertising. So you have a, a, a strategy, you have the different customer types. A lot of times you have a content strategist, you'll have a copywriter, you'll have a designer, and you'll have a approver and a, a trafficker. So there's like six different jobs in there. Now you can you can streamline a lot of those different roles with AI. It can power like the copywriting. It can help with image generation, video generation. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. It can help with trafficking and some like getting it to the right people in many cases. Um, Now it becomes more of a curation process. So the people in the creative creative, they have to just start to realize how to use all these pieces and, you know, piece them together. Um, and become more efficient and then be able to do the personalization because the people that don't learn how to become more personalized, those companies are the ones that are going to be left behind as the, you know, the early adopters figure it out. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So very similar to that message you're talking about there about uh, don't be afraid of it, embrace what's coming and start to learn about it. So when we, we talk about learning, what are your what are your learning go-to hacks? So I'm, again, huge on learning and training programs. I speak about this a lot. What do you do to keep yourself learning? Uh, I read a lot of the newsletters, plus our team's full of people with uh, AI backgrounds and data science. So I'm like constantly in the middle of it. And then another big change in the decade of sales is everything, everyone shares stuff in the open now. In the past, you used to have to read mm. sales books. I know you, I, we probably have a list of 10 of them ben, mm. that both of us have read back in the day. Um, mm. Now you can go on Twitter or X, whatever you want to call it. And there's a hundred different people you can go follow that are either sharing things they've learned or repurposing content they've seen somewhere else that are valuable. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that That's where I see that you can learn a lot more with less barriers to entry than the mm. past. Mm. And that's what I do. I constantly like try to learn from all these different places and take what I like and share it with with people. Um, yep. It's a constant like figuring out what information works in our situation and then trying to implement it into our process. Okay, so you're very much a uh, social media public uh, public information uh, scourer to take that in. Anything else you do for your learning programs? Um, I like listening to podcasts a lot as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. Good call. Uh, they're, they're a great way to learn. Uh, and I, I liked reading. I used to read a lot, but right now we have a the four-year-old and the 10-month-old. So podcasts are sometimes easier when we're... <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Free time? What free time? Yeah. Uh, no, we, we certainly know that. In fact, I actually posted about my my daily schedule the other day and, and I had a... It was a, a great comment um, from a fellow based, based in the US as well. And he, he said, hey, uh, and essentially I, I have an hour and a half to two hours a day to spend with my little one during the week and a lot more over the weekend. And he said, he said, it doesn't seem like, like enough time. And I was like, yeah, it's really hard to balance everything. Um, but things like, like reading, they, they for me uh, at the moment are a distant memory, but I'm sure they'll come <laughs> back around. So yeah. f- fantastic. Awesome. Well, so f- taking from today, what I'm, what I'm hearing is don't be afraid of AI. There is some amazing things happening that will make your customer journey uh, even better, right? Personalized down to what they want to be hearing. 
rather than necessarily generic messages that you're putting out. We've spoken about the importance of testing the data that you put out there and and how platforms like Omniki can help you do that because they allow you to test multiple messages. So uh, I think that that was fantastic, right? And for sales leaders out there, the message is get comfortable with AI, start to practice it, and you'll be ready for, for more and more. So so thank you, Matt. Very grateful for your time today. Can we tell for those listening, um, obviously, go check out Omneki, O-M-N-E-K-Y, uh, but also where can they find you if they'd like to get in touch with you? Yeah, you can send me an email at matt at omniki.com, O-M-N-E-K-Y.com, or you can find me on LinkedIn at Matt Swally. Excellent. And if you've got any tips on becoming a soccer coach, I know, I know, Matt, you've got one of your kids in there in soccer, so send them through as well, right, Matt? I'll be really oh, happy yeah. to hear them. Uh, I've been yeah, reading up cool. on that. I, I, I've been on the weekends. I've been reading up on some of that because I had to like refamiliar myself with that. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, we've gone from uh, from soccer to ballet in the conversation <laughs> we had earlier, and, and for me, I've opted out of ballet because I have no idea, but certainly very <laughs> involved in teaching my daughter how to swim. So excellent, fantastic. Well, thank you, Matt. That's been that's been wonderful today. Uh, and for everyone else out there, keep living in a world of possibility, and you'll be amazed by what you can achieve. Thank you so much, Ben. Want to be kept up to date with any of our free materials to help you build the best sales teams possible? Well, the easiest way you can do so is to follow us on your favorite social media channel. We're at Stronger Sales Teams on most of them, and if you DM us Stronger, we'll send you right back some great resources to help you build your super-powered sales team. If you'd like a little more help, please get in touch directly and book a free discovery call with me. I run a limited number of these sessions, and they're free for my podcast listeners. I'd love to help you out. Until then, see you next week for another podcast of Stronger Sales Teams.